use the term management because actually management can go both ways. Uh, there are people in sugarcane production areas, for instance, in Louisiana, that actually want more fire ants. So we exploit the, mat, the predation that fire ants offer, and in their case, the sugarcane borer is kept under control with fire ant populations. For most of us, uh, management means control or suppression or elimination of fire ant colonies, and we tend not to use the term eradication, particularly in the southeastern United States, because we live in a sea of fire ants, and the best we can hope for is to suppress them locally. But as you heard, uh, mating flights and migration from uh, outside untreated areas will quickly uh, repopulate an area that's been cleared of fire ants. Populations of fire ants fluctuate, as, as Jason mentioned. Uh, weather conditions have a great deal to do with fire ants, and uh, when we have saturated soil, all their mounds come to the surface, and uh, you can see them visually, and uh, they fluctuate through the season, and uh, at, in the middle of the summer or during periods of hot, dry conditions, uh, there's very little evidence of mound activity on the surface, but there are still fire ant mounds or colonies present subterraneanly, they don't need to have a colony on the surface to be happy and have a healthy colony going. And in addition, Vicki mentioned that uh, we constantly have uh, mating flights whenever the temperature and humidity conditions are correct, usually after periods of rain. And so we have seeds of colonies out there uh, dropping from the sky continually. And until the queen produces workers that turn into foraging ants, uh, she's isolated from any uh, bait particles or food items that may be scattered on the surface in an attempt to control them. Uh, so we do have to understand our enemy to be able to manage it uh, optimally. And of course we have the treatment effects and uh, this is hopefully what we can attain, but when we do research we always compare untreated areas to treated areas to find out what the effects of our treatments are because uh, if you apply anything in the spring, by mid-August, naturally, fire ants are going to be low, uh, but in the treated areas, they should be even lower. Uh, in light of this, in some areas of the country, particularly in California, uh, where conditions are much drier and hotter, uh, we've actually stopped using the uh, act, uh, number of active fire ant mounds as a guide for control. And what we're using is uh, hot dog slices or other food lures to assess foraging activity. And what we do is set them out uh, in a transect and monitor them for about 45 to 60 minutes. And within that time, these hot dogs are attract foraging fire ant workers. And we now know that uh, if we lay out 10 slices of hot dogs, if we get ants on two to three of those hot dog slices in a lawn or in a plot somewhere, uh, we have the equivalent of 20 mounds per acre, which is our threshold level for justifying broadcast applications of fire ant baits, uh, because fire ants so dominate the surface that native ants present would probably not be uh, affected by the broadcast bait treatment. The philosophy that we use to build our programs for managing fire ants is called Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. And this is the integration of cultural methods, biological methods, and chemical methods. Currently, probably 80 to 90 percent of what we do is still chemically related uh, for their management. But the biological control programs are coming along, and Dr. Graham will discuss those after my presentation. There are some cultural methods that we acknowledge. Uh, frequent disturbing, low mowing, for instance, in golf courses will drive colonies to the edges. Uh, there are certain uh, indicators that landscape elements may have an effect, but there's very little data that allows us to manipulate those for uh, control. In cattle production systems, however, we can schedule fertility programs so that we avoid summertime calving uh, because fire ant injury to livestock and pets is really aggravated by hot, dry weather conditions and by having calving in the cooler months of the year, we avoid problems without necessarily having to manage the ants, as an example. And similarly, for hay production, uh, fire ants move into bales of hay, uh, whether those are square bales or round bales, uh, and there are cultural methods, meaning that removal of those bales of hay immediately after producing them and putting them on an off-ground location is the way to avoid fire ant uh, infestations in those products. Uh, there is no 
chemical treatment to even address fire ant infestations in bales of hay. So we have to do it using cultural methods. But integrating the three together is the idea behind integrated pest management and elegant programs uh, optimize the use of all three tactics. When it comes to management options, uh, particularly those that are chemically related, uh, we have a uh, few management options to choose from. Uh, the first option there is do nothing. And uh, of course, Dr. Uh, or Jason mentioned the importance of identifying red imported or black imported fire ants or their hybrids uh, because the management options we discuss are targeted to those species. Uh, we do have a number of other pest ants, uh, notably the Argentine ants and uh, the imported crazy ants that are becoming more important in parts of the southeast. Uh, if those are the ant problems and you try to manage those ants using fire ant man management options, you can actually aggravate those other uh, invasive exotic species uh, by eliminating the competition and making the problem worse. Uh, in some cases, doing nothing is the only option. Uh, for instance, in many areas of agriculture, uh, $17 per acre treatment for fire ant suppression is just not cost effective. And so we rely on cultural and biological methods as our options for control uh, and only apply fire ant remedies or chemical control options where economically they are justified. There are a number of options that include individual mound treatments only. I'll discuss that. Uh, surface applied contact insecticides. Uh, pest control operators use these routinely, uh, but there are certain products that are available to the retail market. The program we promote most heavily is the two-step method for fire ant control, and I'll discuss that at some length. And there are organic methods that are available now for those people that want to use uh, certified organic materials or reduce the use of synthetic insecticides. And then for larger landscapes, I'll, I'll touch on using a mix and match or targeted control pro approach for those areas. Individual mound treatments go way back in history. You can see the picture there uh, of a gentleman around the 40s putting probably some primitive insecticides like heptachlor. Uh, around the fire ant colony, and uh, these are still used heavily today. Uh, individual mound treatments are good for generally small properties uh, where you have low populations of fire ants, and the advantage of using individual mound treatments are that they preserve native ants, uh, but they are very expensive and labor intensive and use a lot of insecticides. When we look at surveys of pesticide use uh, here in Texas, uh, and elsewhere, uh, most people, 65% in a Scripps and Howard poll, use individual mound treatments. And uh, many people are treating uh, several times a year using this method. Uh, you have to think about the individual mound treatment approach, not only from an environmental and labor standpoint, but the fact that there is an average of 68 mounds per acre, according to Dr. Porter's work. And in multiple queen areas of infestation, uh, I've worked in areas with almost 1,000 mounds per acre. So even at a low cost per treatment, and uh, probably the, the least costly individual mound treatments are about a dime per mound, not counting labor, but most of them are going to be 25 to 75 cents per mound it becomes very quickly evident that uh, we're using way too much labor and way too much time in areas of heavy infestation. So for low infestations, this is an option, and uh, there are some advantages to that. The other option is the use of surface contact insecticides, and uh, there are a number there to choose from if you go to uh, the big box stores. You can find products like the Raid or the Ortho Max. Uh, most of these are what we call pyrethroid insecticides. They include ingredients like bifenthrin, permethrin, uh, cypermethrin. You notice that all of these words end in RIN. And these are good contact insecticides that are usually formulated on granules that you broadcast with a push-type spreader shown in the top in images. 
and then these must be watered in to wash the insecticide ingredient from the granule into the soil where they eliminate uh, any insects crawling on them. And uh, not just fire ants, but any insect can be uh, killed by contact with these pyrethroid insecticides. Uh, there is another ingredient uh, called fipronil that has been uh, developed for broadcast application use. Uh, the products that are currently available with that ingredient include uh, the top choice and choice insecticides that are only available to commercial pest control uh, providers. Uh, his, historically, there was a product you may have heard of or seen at the store called Over and Out that contained uh, fipronil, but the more recent releases of that product uh, contain only bifenthrin. So uh, consumers no longer have a access to the fipronil products unless they employ a pest management provider. Uh, pyrethroid insecticides will provide about a month or two, maybe three months of suppression of surface activity of fire ants. And uh, only if there is a soaking rain situation that brings all of the colony up to the treated soil do, do those products actually eliminate colonies. So what they provide normally is, is suppression of surface ant activity for a, a period of time and when the effects of the product wear off, the uh, fire ants return to the surface. In the case of the fipronil products, colonies are actually eliminated, uh, even dwelling deeper in the soil. Uh, the big difference between baits and contact insecticides is that you want to have uh, contact insecticides watered in after use to, to soak them into the soil from the granules. Uh, for bait insecticides, we want to apply those during periods of dry weather and not have any rain activity within 24 to 48 hours after uh, application uh, because the rain will dissolve the baits and uh, they will wash off into the soil. So the two-step program uh, relies on in, uh, uh, periodic broadcast application of a bait product uh, first and then followed by uh, individual mound treatments. This is the least toxic and most cost-effective approach that uh, we've been able to develop. It's very suitable for larger fully infested areas and reduces the surface runoff water contamination. If I can have the uh, video there for that first slide, that would be a good time to run this. Now, for broadcast application of baits, you can use several different uh, uh, applicators that include these uh, handheld seeders that can be purchased for about $10 or so. And uh, they throw about a 12-foot swath. And you're not looking for any fire ant mounds. You're basically walking across the lawn or the treated area and applying the appropriate rate per uh, colony, which is usually about a pound and a half to two pounds per acre depending on the product, but there are some dilute products that require higher application rates. Uh, a Herd GT77 model seeder can be mounted on just about any vehicle, and there are a few other uh, applicators that have this capacity because most applicators will put out much more product uh, than necessary or grind the bait up. For individual mound treatments, uh, we only use these then to control nuisance mounds either at the time of uh, before you put the broadcast bait treatment out, but most people will wait a few days after a broadcast application before they treat only the nuisance mounds. And if we could go ahead and have that video run, uh, there are a number of mound treatment options. Uh, there are dust formulations. Orthene is very cheap and easy to apply. You just apply it the dust to the top of an undisturbed mound and it works as a, dust, uh, a dusting powder as a contact insecticide. There are a number of granules applied dry, but these granules must be watered in very much like the contact insecticides that I described to get the insecticides into the soil. The liquid insecticides very often have to be diluted before use, although there are some ready-to-use products. And then there are some bait products that are suitable for mound treatments, but only those that provide a rapid elimination of the colony. And we'll discuss the insect growth regulators here in a bit. 
But uh, hydromethanol or andro or endoxicarb are very fast-acting individual mound treatments that are effective for individual mound treatments. Uh, bait formulations uh, are developed from soybeans and corn. The oil from soybean seeds is uh, mixed with the active ingredient uh, to form the product that the ants, the worker ants, actually ingest and bring to the rest of the colony. This oil and insecticide liquid is then uh, placed in a granule that's made up of a defatted processed corn grit particle, and I think of that much more like a sponge. And uh, when you add the two together, you have that soybean oil with the insecticide in it on a corn grit particle, with the corn grit being basically a carrier so the worker ants can carry that to the colony, uh, and the fourth instar larvae then can uh, digest that particle of food and ingest the active ingredient, which is then fed to the rest of the colony for control. These products necessarily have to be somewhat slow in their killing activity, otherwise the active ingredient is not translocated through the colony to the queen or queens. There are a number of baits to choose from. Uh, Amdro and Amdro Pro are sold at retail markets now, uh, and it's the oldest bait on the market. But there are a number of other products that are available there uh, that are more often available only at specialty stores uh, like co-ops and insect uh, uh, professional dealers. Uh, and then there are the insect growth regulators at the bottom, phenoxycarb, methoprene, and pyroproxifen that are very slow acting because they don't kill fire ant adults, uh, the workers of the queens. They basically prevent queen ants from producing more worker ants, and the colony slowly dies uh, because the workers are not replaced. There are only a few of these that are registered for use in cattle pastures, Andro Pro, Extinguish, and uh, Extinguish Plus, which is what I'll discuss next, and Esteem. These products break down into faster acting bait products and slower long lasting bait products. And for instance, Andro is a fairly fast acting product that provides 60 to 90% uh, control in about three to six weeks of application. Uh, if I can get my arrow here, you can see the, the line that uh, is a sort of a hypothetical uh, pro, uh, performance profile for that product. And then the insect growth regulators that I mentioned, these are much uh, slower to eliminate colonies when they're applied in the early spring. Uh, it takes about a month or two before you get six, uh, 80 or 90 percent control. But in the fall, late summer, fall, maximum control doesn't occur until the next spring. But when you combine those two ingredients together, an insect growth regulator and a faster acting product, you get the best out of both worlds. You get a very fast acting control, which is long lasting, and that's uh, uh, available now in products like uh, the Extinguish Plus product. There are some organic remedies uh, that are available. Spinosad is certified organic by OMRI Institute. Uh, this could be a broadcast bait application, and then for individual mount treatments in a two-step approach for an organic program, for instance, pyrethrins uh, can be used as a mound wrench, and delimonene is also available. Uh, and home remedies, such as uh, using very hot or boiling water is an option as well. So broadcast application is, is the first step to the two-step program. Uh, there are a number of uh, little handheld seeders or belly bumpers that are available, uh, but for larger acreages, uh, the Herd GT77 model seeder can be used, and for even larger acres, uh, these products can be applied by air, either by helicopter or fixed-wing airplane. So for lar large uh, landscapes, uh, what we do is kind of use a Google map or a map of the grounds and think about these program options and uh, use different products and different techniques for gaining that level of control that's uh, uh, acceptable for the different uh, areas on that property. For instance, on school grounds, uh, certainly you want to have the highest level of control around high traffic areas where people are congregating and, and possibly contact insecticides applied as a surface treatment are most appropriate there. These cost more money 
to apply, uh, but they do give uh, reliable control. And then for uh, the rest of the area, perhaps the two-step program, uh, which is a little cheaper, uh, can be more suitable. And if there are rough areas or uh, uh, wooded areas, perhaps no treatment in those areas will help preserve our biological control options that uh, Dr. Graham will discuss next. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Bart. Um, 